Introducing first the fighter on my right, fighting out of the B2 Digital Blue Corner. He stands six feet three inches tall and weighed in at 170 pounds. He is a shoot fighter, representing Kraken Fight Team, Brian Iceman McDowell. And his opponent to my left, fighting out of the Triton Funds Red Corner. He stands six feet tall, weighed in at 170 pounds. He's a jiu-jitsu and kickboxing fighter, representing E-Town Beatdown, Ricky Jones Jr. Your referee for this fight is George GQ Conley. Ricky Jones Jr. trains under Professor Josh Johnson. He is a jiu-jitsu practitioner, so we have a purple belt against a, someone who's never practiced jiu-jitsu. <laughs> a, a, a catch wrestler. A catch wrestler. Yeah, that's not. Which is so intriguing, and Chris Lytle, you are also a catch wrestler. Absolutely. Now, now look at the concentration coming out of McDowell. Look at his eyes. He is 100% focused. So Brian McDowell is six foot three at 170 pounds. He is long and lengthy. Oh, look at him trying to get the guillotine choke from that standing position right there. See, this is where you get some kind of unorthodox position, I think, from, from a catch wrestling standpoint. So Brian McDowell, um, he likes to pressure people, mm -hmm. as, as you know, we've seen in the past out of him. Now, a lot of people might not realize just how extremely tiring this is to be in this position right here. Uh, just go flex your muscle really hard for two minutes straight. Yeah. It's kind of what's happening right here, like an isometric burn. There, he, he's, he's, he's been able to get that position a couple yeah, times yeah, right now. Yeah, I think he's got his hands locked. I think, Chris, I think, you think McDonald's got his he's hands got the locked. arm in guillotine, which is going to be very difficult to finish. He needs to... He's either going to have to pull guard right there or to reverse it to get on top or, or get that that right arm out from underneath there. Chris, you think a catch wrestling background lends itself to a guillotine more so than others? Uh, I think so because it's there very often. I think, you know, people have a little bit of variation on that, you know, more from a catch wrestling background. He's just going from submission to submission right now. You know, pretty good for a guy that doesn't practice ground karate. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, I was saying that tongue-in-cheek as he was. He said, you know, uh, fun fact. I've never practiced jujitsu yet. He has a Kimura grip right here. Yes. Well, he knew he was coming into a dog fight, and you know that's two fights in a row. Oh yeah. Where you know he he took hard opponents, and um, McDowell's positioning is giving uh, Jones fits. Well, Jones is doing a good job right now. He's got those, oh, a, a familiar position we've seemed to see about three or four times tonight, is it not? Wow. You know, this is uh, the, the Khabib legacy right now. Yeah. Can you do a guillotine with your legs locked up like that? Uh, you can get it. It's hard to finish because you cannot extend your opponent's hips. You know, in order to get a good guillotine, unless it's just extremely tight, extremely I think, difficult. I think McDonald's about to put himself back in guard. <laughs> Back to his own takedown position right you know now. What? That was slick. Continuing to push the pace right now is McDowell. Call it what you will. This is some high-level grappling from both sides. And they are just throwing punches. Wow, what a fight. And you hear the local crowd here in E-Town cheering for Ricky Jones Jr. Yeah. McDowell's going to have to uh, kind of gather himself. I would almost pull guard. Oh, oh wow. Oh, oh, wow. Ricky I, I Jones kind of. I think like, Jones might be out of gas right now. I mean, I think he might have a drill into him. Good elbow landed right there. He's got to be careful, does McDowell. McDowell's corner is screaming for elbows. Yeah, because he landed a big elbow. He's got to be careful right now. He's going to get swept. He's going to get arm barred if he's not careful. Good elbow right there. And I'll tell you, a good elbow, a good punch is the kryptonite to a real good jiu-jitsu practitioner. You know, I'd almost like to see that exchange again. Because if you watch McDow McDowell, Jones was throwing heavy punches. And arm McDowell was, attempt, he was crouching against the fence with his hands up, with his eyes were focused on getting a takedown. 
I, I, I'm not sure he wasn't playing possum there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'd really like to see that again. I mean, the way it's set up, it, it, it actually turned the fight. McNeil doing a smart job right now. You have to crowd in when the guy has an armbar attack. We call it stacking. You have to stack your yeah. opponent. McDowell's corner is continuously yelling for elbows. Uh, I think that's a great advice right now. Yeah, like it's I said, Justice uh, Bumpus and uh, Dylan Rink. Elbows are pretty much, like I said, the kryptonite. With Eric Wesley as the head coach. It's Eric Wesley uh, screaming for elbows. And right now we're just talking about the pressure right now that McDowell tries to put on. Just relentless pressure Man, right now. Man, this first round. Back and forth action right now. It's still the forth. first round. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's what Ricky, <laughs> Ricky Jones is thinking. Is this yeah. still the first what round? What happened? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just a minute ago I thought about how this guy knocked it, out. I, I tell you what, I think Brian McDowell is about to finish this fight. Wow! <laughs> wow! Uh, you know what he pressure. just did? That's that pressure right that's there. That's pressure and toughness. That's uh, McDowell just out tough Jones. That's what that was. I, I think Jones hit a you know hit an adrenaline dump, and um, he he just couldn't push past it. You know, he, his positioning wasn't where he needed to be in well, order to get his, his breath back. You saw with about a minute and a half left in the round, you said, I think he's tired, I think he gassed out. And he, he tried to hold it out until there was only about five seconds left, but that was just all she wrote. When you saw McDowell go against the fence, I'm really sure hard punch. Yeah, you think he might have just been right playing here, here it is. Watch, 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 watch. Wait, wait, oh. Yeah, that was a... Uh, no, 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 no. That awesome. is a crafty veteran move right there, <laughs> Kelly Patrick. <laughs> man, there. I love this McDowell kid, man. Yeah. <laughs> Training partners for McDowell we have not mentioned are Trent Knott and Harry Hunsucker, also Sean Nickel. Yeah, I heard of Harry Hunsucker. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. I'm surprised he isn't here tonight. Oh, I know why. I think he's out of town. Is he still? I would imagine. I don't know. <laughs> he might be quarantining. Yeah. Wow. Fantastic performance. Uh, bo by both fighters. Oh, absolutely. Ladies Great fight. Ladies and gentlemen, referee George Conley has styled a stop to this fight at 4 minutes and 51 seconds, declaring the winner by TKO.